Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here. And that's right, you read the title correctly. Good job. A+. I'm finally counting down my top 20 favorite Sinnoh themes from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. I know a lot of you have been anticipating this video ever since I made my top 20 Unova themes list, and it's my pleasure to finally present it to you. Sun and Moon just came out, but it will take me many months of listening to Alola music to create a list for those games. But Sinnoh music is beautiful and would definitely suit this season we call winter. Now if Hoenn is the land of epic trumpets, Sinnoh is the region of peaceful pianos, bass, and maybe a few saxophones. Just jazzy in general, and is characterized by mellow, comforting songs, adventurous root themes, perilous danger, and vast open valleys under a giant mountain. The music is serene and atmospheric, but can also convey real suspense and instability, like a snowstorm. The soundtrack was made for a snowy location, and since I played these games the least during my childhood, it's actually the most nostalgic region for me. So this soundtrack is the hardest to describe without saying, oh, this song is good because it's nostalgic. Now understand that whenever I stop talking and the background turns red, that means it's either my favorite part of the theme, or I want you to listen closely to the music. I want to thank Michael for giving me the tools to acquire this footage, and if you want to skip to the top 10, just poke this Bidoof right here, right in the belly. And note that the lake theme playing right now is actually an honorable mention, and could have taken the number 20 spot. But let's see what knocked out the lake theme from that entry, becoming number 20. Team Galactic Building and Team Galactic HQ. These are two themes that I thought were extremely atmospheric. But first, let's talk about the Team Galactic building theme. When a composer creates a theme that perfectly sums up the situation through music, you know you've got some grade A video game tunes. Cause this theme really feels like you're snooping around a place that you're not supposed to be in. You feel like you can get caught, but you're not in any real danger. But then we step up a little bit when you get to the headquarters. Now it's about to go down. It's fast-paced and emotional. Business is being done here, and you're not welcome. It's very common in Unova to have high notes to convey emotion, but this is one of the overworld themes in Sinnoh that has high notes and still can be menacing. It's intense and really shows how even the lowest spot on this list can be amazing. Number 19 The Bicycle Theme You really should know that one of my favorite pastimes is biking. I love it, and this theme perfectly sums up the feeling I have when I bike. Admittedly, my favorite bike theme is the Kalos bike theme, and I love every other one as well. I love them because they're objectively great, but they don't all capture my personal emotions. This one does. It's also one of the very few themes that is actually nostalgic to me. I really don't know how to describe it, but other bike themes are happy for the sake of being happy. They're uplifting and fast-paced, but this one has something else about it. Some kind of other emotion other than happiness. It's a positive emotion, but also not. I think I'm just describing nostalgia right now, but I want to make this objective, so let's just acknowledge how awesome it is that a lot of the instruments in this theme are replicating bike sounds. The cymbals and bells are very appropriate, and once again, I'm a sucker for high notes, upping octaves, and shifting tempos. I know why I love this, because it really mimics the rhythm of bike pedaling and really goes well with the activity it conveys. It really takes a genius to come up with such a good melody. It's very soothing, and I always enjoy listening to this theme as I ride my bike with the wind blowing through my hair. I actually wear a helmet, so scratch that last part. Number 18 Jubilife City I'm gonna use the night version as my example because it's a little better and has a nice saxophone in the background. And who doesn't like saxophones? I guess that's why a lot of Sinnoh themes are amazing, but let's focus on Jubilife. As a child, I never noticed how great this theme was. But when I suddenly heard the remastered version in X and Y, I was hit, like a punch to the face with this beautiful tune. It really feels like a theme you would hear when walking down a well-developed area in a big city. Not a huge crowd, but definitely full of activity. I can totally imagine saying hello to all the people I pass by, smelling a pretty flower, taking care of some light errands, and then just enjoying life to this tune. It's all good. Number 17. Sandgem Town. It's just another happy tune. I actually forgot this theme existed until a few years ago when I heard the anime version and asked myself, what is this magical theme? The music I hear makes me believe in true love and friendship. I guess this theme was just underrated in my mind since Sandgem was the town I visited the least during my few playthroughs of Pokemon Diamond. There isn't an ounce of negativity in this track. And I would definitely relate this to Old Dale Town from Hoenn, because when you begin your journey, you may have regrets. I know it's a game, but if this was real life, I'd be rethinking whether or not I want to go on a perilous journey. 
but when this theme comes on, I would take a nice deep breath and fill myself with some good old fashioned confidence. That's what Sanjem Town's air is full of. 70% nitrogen, 10% oxygen, and 20% confidence. I guess it's just a shame how you barely spend time in Sanjem, and when you do, it's usually inside Rowan's lab, which obviously has different music. But I hope you don't forget about this gem located near the sand. Number 16. Yeah, I stayed quiet during the intro, cause, well, you know why. You listen to it, it's intricate and constantly adds to itself, making the track even more epic every few seconds it's playing. There are just so many layers to this electronic theme. It didn't need to be this good, it's just a game corner, not an epic battle. But damn, is this intense. It's one of the few tracks in this game that was composed by two people, cause Goichi Noze started it off, and then it gives us a little throwback to Masuda's Kanto Game Corner theme. You have no soul if this theme does not make you bop your head and make you feel like you're having a ton of fun at an arcade with friends on a Saturday night. In the West, this is the last game corner in any Pokemon game, and it deserves such fun music. Number 15 Canalave City The harp is not a thing that a child would appreciate. What kid thinks that the harp is the coolest thing ever? Come to think of it, this whole theme would not appeal to a person with an immature mind. That's why I never realized how good this theme was until I became an adult. It's so serene and is definitely the most beautiful town theme in Sinnoh. It's somewhat sad, but when you think about it, it's just emotional. And this emotional tune could be perceived as happy as well. Like the happiness of coming back home to greet your loving family after a long day of work. And that's why, whenever I picture Canalave in my mind, it's always in an eternal sunset. The sun's reflection glistens on the water under the bridge and the boats are coming back to dock. That's a kind of happy scene that you'll enjoy once you understand the true meaning of life. I'm just kidding, I don't really know what the meaning of life is, but when I listen to this theme, I just feel smarter. A feeling of being at peace with who I am and how my life is going. It goes to show that the Sinnoh soundtrack has some themes that were created by true geniuses. Good job, Ichinose. Good job. Number 14. Yeah, that intro is as epic as the battle theme can get, but that's the reason this theme is so low on the list. The beginning is amazing, it suits the creators of time and space, but the rest of the theme doesn't manage to live up to the hype of the intro. But we're only focusing on the positives of the tracks I put on this list, so no matter what, I love every single theme in this video, and the fact that it even made it onto the list means that it beat out some of my favorite tracks. So don't feel bad if this was your favorite. This theme really conveys the feeling of battling a god at the top of a mountain. And I don't know about you, but that's a pretty insane way to describe a piece of music. But I can't help it if it's true, and it's by now that you should realize how the Sinnoh soundtrack made the piano sound like the most epic instrument on earth. Yeah, it's pretty hard to do that when the last generation was filled with trumpets. And I guess that's the theme of Sinnoh, being epic not by sheer power, but by scale and emptiness. And all the nods to Spear Pillar make this theme brilliant. This music is intimidating, not because of any drums or horns, which would constantly blast your face off, in a good way of course, but rather by menacing bass and of course piano, which represents higher power and intelligence because this instrument was used by geniuses for centuries. This theme is above us, a gift from the gods. Thank you Arceus. No problem Ron. Number 13. Eterna City. Okay. I know it feels weird to have such a mellow town theme come after an epic battle theme, but I'm taking some risks. This theme is the most unique town theme in all of Sinnoh, but it still manages to capture the essence and aura of the region. It's calm and relaxing. I whistle to this tune every day, and until Paniola Town and Ranch came along, this was the only slow country sounding piece of music we've got. Sometimes it's just fine to take a stroll and smell the roserades, but be careful, they're poisonous. But even if you do get sick, that harmonica would heal you right up. 
there has to be a chill dude playing this music in the middle of the town, cause this feels so real. I get a sense of heart and soul from these instruments, as if an actual person is playing the tune, and crying from all the emotion they're feeling. It transcends the outdated technology used to play this theme, and that's what a good Pokemon Town theme does. And the part that you are about to hear sounds as if whoever's playing is getting extremely into the song, and is just going all out, and then catches their breath. Right now. This is the life. Number 12. The Pokemon League. This is one of the saddest themes in Pokemon. I'm just thinking, would this or Undela Town during the winter be more sad? I don't know, but I could tell you what this theme represents. It's all about you, the player, about to face the Pokemon League. You're a kid, about to pass the ultimate test. You're reminiscing about all the amazing things that you have done before getting to this point. You took down an evil organization, battled a god, and saved the world. And now you're on your way to becoming a champion. You're just looking over this waterfall and thinking about all the people in Pokemon that became your friends. Maybe you're even thinking about your mother back home in Twinleaf Town as you face this giant castle. Your mom's gonna be proud. The only things beside you right now are the Pokemon on your team and this soul piano that's playing. It's just one instrument throughout the whole theme. And just like your party, this instrument has been with you throughout the whole game. You take a deep breath. Now go get him, champ. You'll do great. And in the off chance you don't, everyone will still love you just as much. Number 11. Gym Leader and Elite Four Battle. Quick, listen to the bass. It's the same tune as part of the Johto Trainer Battle theme. In fact, the whole theme is just a faster version of the Olivine Lighthouse and Mount Silver theme. Just listen! How didn't everyone suspect their Gold and Silver remake? Cause these are some blatant references. Right now the Elite Four battle theme is just a lower pitched version of the Gym Leader theme music, which makes them both equally awesome. This theme is menacing, and because the theme shares a tune with Johto tracks, it sounds pretty Japanese. Very ethnic, fast paced, and intense, which makes the Elite Four and Gym Leaders seem way more important than they are. This sounds like a battle theme a village elder would have. Nevertheless, it fits and I'm not complaining. There will be a link in the description that compares this theme with Olivine Lighthouse and Mount Silver. How is this music not a reference? Number 10 Team Galactic Boss Battle Now we're up to the top 10 and the order of each track is super deliberate but they're all A pluses in my book. All Team Galactic battle themes deserve a good massage or something, but this one's menacing and builds on itself, getting more and more emotional as if Cyrus is somehow getting his emotions back. We're fighting a guy who has just given up on this world and even his Pokemon. It's a sad situation and you're right in the middle of it. Cyrus himself is definitely a beloved character and this theme can give us a hint as to why. He has one tone, one simple goal and this theme has the same consistent dreadful tone that doesn't change, but rather it gets more intense until Cyrus finally gets somewhat mad. There are like two different kinds of bass lines cause this guy is as low as they come. And I just love how this theme stays intimidating even when it gets to the impactful high notes. See? I'm still scared. Now this is when Cyrus is giving his all. It's some serious stuff. Most other bosses are at least somewhat sane. They don't live only to see their plans come to fruition. Getsis doesn't have a very specific goal other than ruling the world, and even Lysander has a life that he has to deal with outside of Team Flare. Cyrus only lives in order to see his plan of destroying the world and creating a new one come true. It's his only purpose, and you're delaying his plans. Every good boss battle theme should mimic the emotions the villain is feeling when you battle them. In this case, you're battling an emotionless man who only feels passion for his objective. So the theme should stay ominous throughout the whole battle, but get more and more fierce. And you know that Cyrus is finally feeling the heat of the battle when this following effect cuts into the theme and the whole track goes up an octave, getting even more high than it was before. Now Cyrus is mad. Number 9
Opening selection, Rowan's Lab, and Hall of Fame. Starting from this entry, every single theme on this list could have been number one. Yeah, that's how good these themes are. And since these three tracks have the same tune, they share the same spot. But each one conveys a different message. The opening selection theme is nearly identical to the Hall of Fame room theme because they're both congratulatory. The opening selection is a little bit higher in key because it's the happiest. The start of your journey is nothing but positive, but the Hall of Fame is lower and represents the end of your journey and all the hardships that came before it. Making the theme that you hear at the beginning of your adventure audible at the end of your journey is always a brilliant choice. We got that in Sun and Moon as well and that was a fantastic decision. We've come full circle, we're going back home after this and life is going to be good. And those bells are sick! We've accomplished all our goals, but our loved ones loved us as much as they could already at the beginning of the game, so nothing has truly changed. This theme is beautiful, and the version heard in Rowan's lab is mellower, less congratulatory, and more Christmassy. Yeah, I get a winter vibe from this theme. As if Don and Lucas were snuggling by the fire in Rowan's lab, with Professor Rowan in the back telling stories about evolution as snow falls outside. This is the coldest region after all, and this theme makes me feel comfortable and welcome in this winter wonderland. I almost cry when I hear it, and I'm sure this theme is the reason a lot of fans identify Sinnoh as their home. Number 8 The following root themes Yeah, that's right, virtually all the root themes in Sinnoh are perfect and deserve a spot in my top 10. I can't have every entry in this list consist of root themes, so some of them were put together in the number 8 slot, while others will come back later in the list. This is the region of root themes. It's what I'll remember about Sinnoh for the rest of my life. If someone asked me, Hey Ron, what's the region with the most amount of root themes as well as the region with the most consistently amazing root themes? Well, I'd say Sinnoh, of course. Now get out of my house, you random stranger. Now, Route 201 sets a good example of being the quaintest root theme I've ever heard. This is the theme I like to hear as I see my children frolicking in the open winter field with thick coats, rosy cheeks, and wide smiles on their faces. It's such a good tune to begin your adventure with. Now, Route 203 is a little too advanced for an early Route theme. We're just starting our adventure, and already we get such cool-sounding music. It's definitely the most underrated track in my number 8 entry, and I hope you show it some love now that you're aware of its beauty. I can't handle such smooth saxophones with level 4 Pokémon. And after thinking about it, this theme is actually my most nostalgic Route theme. Yep, for me, this is the theme that gives me the feeling of wanting to be a child again. This part in particular makes me feel as happy as I was during the spring and summer of 2007, when I was only 10 years old. I'd say Route 205 is also an extremely nostalgic track for me. I just think of myself as a child walking around on a nice sunny day. I love the feeling I get when listening to this Route theme. All this music takes me back so much that I feel like sharing these feelings that I have would be too personal. They're emotions that I have deep inside my heart and if you just weren't in my place, you may not understand how this theme makes me feel. Now we're way into our journey. When I listen to Route 206, what I see in my mind is a young version of myself hiking through woods and mountains. And that's not even a thing I did! You see how nostalgia can cloud the past and heighten your experiences, making them feel grander than they actually are? Yeah, that's the abstract feeling I get from this theme. Adventure. Pure happiness about the fact that I'm going through beautiful mountainous areas. The feeling of freedom and absolutely no care in the world. Damn, do I want to be a kid again. The anime version is perfect, and it's the reason I rediscovered the Sinnoh soundtrack. God, I love this music so much. And this isn't even the top five. Route 206 is disgustingly underrated. And finally, Route 216. A beautiful route with the most atmospheric route theme in the Pokemon world. This theme really sounds like we're traversing a snowy valley. It is the ultimate winter theme. Every instrument mimics the traditional sounds of snow. Bells are the best. But unfortunately, people somehow remember the somber beginning, but forget this part of the theme where it gets all happy and fun. The music still fits the situation. Now I really understand how this music could make anyone believe Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum are the best Pokemon games. It was a good decision to release this video during the winter, because I always play these themes as I look outside and see the snow fall. Number 7 Eterna Forest This is a theme that is extremely personal to me for so many reasons. My first ever Pokemon music review was released on my birthday back when I had like 300 subscribers, and it was of this beautiful theme. And from then on I was known as the green dude who likes Pokemon music. Click here if you want to check that old video out. Okay, now do you understand how many times I've biked through my local forest and listened to this theme? Do you know how many mornings I've been woken up by this tune? more than I can count. This theme makes me fall in love with the color green all over again. 
You know how in Eterna Forest there is light shining through the trees? And do you by any chance know the feeling of sunlight peering through the trees and kissing your skin? That is the feeling of Eterna Forest. And the anime version actually got me to appreciate this theme back when I discovered the soundtrack and rekindled my love for Pokemon music. Just close your eyes for a few seconds and pretend you're in the most magnificent forest you can dream of. Number 6 Giratina's Battle Theme Now let's transition from the most peaceful theme in the soundtrack to the most insane one. This is the Pokemon music representation of battling a monster in hell. The banished centipede is now your foe and this renegade Pokemon could instantly kill you. Are you ready for the demon that is Giratina? Cause he's coming! That is literally the most perfect combination of notes and instruments that could have ever been used to represent Giratina. It's Giratina in the music form. It must take a genius to be able to look at a fictional character and manage to create a battle theme that perfectly represents the monster musically. That's how successful this battle theme is. It makes you feel like he's shadow sneaking everywhere, just circling you and your Pokemon so you don't know where this Pokemon is going to attack from. And in the process, it's destroying everything it touches. But even though this is the devil's music, there's something organic about it. It feels natural and Giratina's humanity can be seen, or Pokemanity. It's just not purely satanic. It's crazy and scary, but also fascinating and elegant somehow. It's basically as messed up as it can get while still having rhyme and reason. That's what Giratina is all about. Antimatter is pretty messed up, but it has a reason for existing. I'm sure lots of kids use their master ball right away after hearing the intro so they can stop this terrifying music. But sometimes terrifying is exactly what the game needs. Number 5 Frontier Brain Battle As a veteran Pokemon fan, I know by now that battle themes that debut in the post-game are always perfect. This theme is amazing, and I love how, just like its predecessor, it shares the tune of the Battle Frontier itself. It's just a shame that not a lot of people have heard this in their actual games. It sounds fun. The original Battle Frontier brain theme is more intimidating, but this theme is lighter and has more character. It's highly energetic and colorful like the Frontier brains themselves. It's one of the most fast-paced battle themes I've ever encountered, like these Frontier brains are celebrities with important stuff to do. And it knocks me dead how the next part pays homage to the original Frontier brain battle theme. I love how Sinnoh has many themes that include the tune of preceding tracks from other gens. Such pure fun. Good job guys. Good job. Number 4 Sunny Shore City Damn! That is how the intro of a town theme should sound like. I wish every town theme had that intro, but the rest of the song perfectly fits this town. It doesn't fit the gym leader cause he's gloomy, but this place seems fun and constantly happy, like a beach town over the water. It's hard to live up to the hype of a final town in the region. This is the last destination before the Pokemon League, and it definitely feels like it. You're about to get your final badge, so let's celebrate with this energizing tune. No culture on earth would perceive this theme as anything but happy. It screams success and achievement. Now I'm recording this while I have the flu, so excuse me if I get emotional during number 3. I've been recording for like 5 hours. Number 3 The following 3 root themes. First up is Route 209, one of the few root themes that can make me cry. This is pure melodic perfection. 
Only a god could come up with such a melody. It matches so many different situations, all beautiful. I've listened to this theme early in the spring morning while biking through fog. I've chilled during the summer sunset with this tune. I've walked through glistening snow and came home as the leaves were falling while Route 209 was playing on my phone, and it heightened every experience. This is a magical tune. To me, it doesn't feel like pure adventure or happiness. It feels like everything. It makes good memories great and bad memories bearable. I could listen to this while crying and I can listen to this while laughing. I wish I could give it a slot on its own because it's seriously amazing. But the fact that a root theme would be number 3 on my list is unheard of because none of the other regions would have a root theme in the top 3. That's how good these root themes are. Next is Route 210. This is the happiest sounding root theme ever. All the power that this theme has came out of a DS? This theme is also the most adventurous theme in the game. I feel like I can do anything, like I can fly over a grassy mountain. This is a drug, this theme is a drug. How can you frown while this theme is playing? How can you not enjoy yourself when listening to this upbeat music? I'm still amazed at how this kind of music can be made and not be loved by everyone on earth. And to top it all off, an anime version exists. Listen! And the final theme that deserves the number 3 slot is Route 225. This is one of the most unique Route themes in Sinnoh. It's only played in the post game. You already beat the game, it's even found within the credits. This is one of the few Route themes that doesn't make you feel like you're in the middle of an awesome journey, but rather like you're already the best person ever. You won, that's it! Feel happy dudes! Just chill to this awesome track as you explore. Number 2 Well this theme was at one point in my number one spot. That's how good it is. The intro is perfect. Probably my favorite battle theme intro, but the rest of the battle theme manages to live up to the hype of the beginning, mostly because of that breathtaking bass. <sighs> it's overwhelming at times. People almost rightfully say that this theme doesn't fit a couple of fairies, but the melody does. It sounds ancient, just like these lake guardians. This would be the theme of thousand year old sentinels. I would expect this theme to be playing when battling any creature with the word guardian in the title. The fact that they're small doesn't matter, in fact the falling part kinda suits them very well. Just imagine these small monsters nimbly floating around the cave, dodging your moves, hiding behind stalagmites. Right now. This is a quality battle theme. I could not ask for more. I just don't hear any flaws, and the Middle Eastern vibe was a great choice. I really hope you appreciate this theme as much as I do. And the falling part sounds like Yuxi Mesprit or Azelf is getting really mad and wants to end the battle once and for all. And before we move on to number one, how about I talk about the honorable mentions? And even though I love these themes a lot, people in the comment section are definitely gonna ask why I hate the following themes, just because they're not in the top 10, even though they all at one point were going to be on my list. The Pokemon Center theme at night was such a good idea. The Global Terminal is way better than any non-main game feature needs to sound like. Veilstone City is so jazzy and atmospheric, I love it. I adore the surf music. Surfing wasn't even close to a big part of the game, so instead of having an epic theme like in Hoenn, we got a nice, peaceful, and outright beautiful ballad of the water. I wish this could have been on the list. Mount Coronet is also a huge theme that is intensely atmospheric and could have made it on the list. I wish I had room to talk about this music. Route 228 is here because all the route themes in Sinnoh are phenomenal, and while this theme is great, it's my least favorite of the route themes in Sinnoh. Hard Home was going to be the number 20 spot, and I even wrote the script for its entry. It's a good theme. Stark Mountain is so unique and fun to listen to. I describe it as hot and spicy. 
All Team Galactic battle teams could have been on the list, but I mentioned that before during Cyrus' spot. And finally, Twin Leaf Town is your hometown and every hometown theme is appealing and sentimental. So by default, let's just assume they're part of their respective top 10s. But now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Get excited, because the number one spot goes to... Battle Champion Cynthia! This girl had some big shoes to fill as the first female champion, and not only did she deliver, but so did her battle theme. People might argue that she is the best champion. To me, her battle wasn't as hard as it was for others, but a lot of people do believe she was challenging and active throughout the plot. But something that we can all agree on is that her battle theme is legendary. This theme is easily described by visuals and animation. It is synesthetic. The variation in pitches really helps paint a picture of strong creatures breathing as they battle against one another. The highs and lows represent the highs and lows of the battle, just like any good champion battle theme should. Using the battle theme, I can pinpoint when Cynthia is feeling confident, when she's giving it her all, when she's beginning to waver, when she's getting crazy mad, and when she finally realizes that you are at the very least her equal and begins to have bittersweet fun. This theme chokes me with suspense. It's dramatic and so unique, but perfectly paced. It's powerful and only gives me a few seconds to breathe. Cynthia is giving us all she has and realizes this isn't a joke. Your Pokemon are dropping like flies. They're being knocked out left and right. You can both start bursting out from emotion. You and Cynthia are struggling and only now realize that you have to breathe for a second and clear your minds. Now let's overthrow the queen and become champion. Guys, this video took 6 hours just to record, so if you enjoyed, make sure to check out my Top 20 Unova Themes video right here. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you guys very soon.